Alright guys, it's the final day before Trailmaker's 1.7 Spacebound update is released. So before you get your hands on this update, here is everything you need to know about 1.7 Spacebound. Let's get into it. But wait, before we do, did you know that we got some new merch? Because the hype for space is real, I have made an all new Astro Collection. Check out this cool hat, why not grab a hoodie? We even have a desk mat. If you fancy supporting the channel and grabbing yourself some awesome merch, this is a great way to do that. Go check it out, link will be down in the description below. And use code UZ2023 for 15% off your purchase during checkout. Now that's Said, let's get back into the video. So the first thing you'll see is the brand new single player and multiplayer layout. Click onto Sandbox and you'll see the new Space Sector map. This map can be experienced in two ways, Sandbox mode and Peaceful Sandbox mode. So if you don't want those pesky space pirates sneaking up on you, you can choose so. This also applies to multiplayer when making a public or private session. When you first load into the Space Sector, you will spawn at one of the many spawn points on the map, Galena 9. Take your time to explore the station, walking up to Chirpos and screens Will give you some dialogue and information for you to read. Opening the map, you will see four different planets to explore. Micro Terra, Dune, Polrum, and Nasu. You also have another spawn point in space at the GC4020 and a few other points of interest. The Asteroid Vortex and the SS Wreck. There is also 99 chests to find in this map, so if you need those fancy accessories, this is a great way to get some coin. You may also notice a new gauge on the screen. This is the atmosphere and gravity gauge. When entering a planet's atmosphere, it will show you how much gravitational pull that planet has. Now, let's go over all the new blocks. We will first see all the free blocks from the update, and then we will go over what you'll get from purchasing the DLC. The first block you will find in the propulsion tab is the Space Thruster. This block has 250 power, it weighs 15 kg, has 4 attachment points and will cost you 3 power cores. It's the perfect propulsion for space. Moving on to the Mechanic tab, you will find the Gyro and the Gyro Stabilizer. The Gyro is used to gyroscopically rotate around its axis corresponding to the arrows and position. In the Config tab, you can adjust the strength of the Gyro. This block weighs 5kg, has 16 attachment points, and will cost you only one power core. The Gyro Stabilizer is used to readjust itself to point in the uppermost vertical direction, even though there is no up in in space, in trail makers, there is. This is very handy to keep your builds perfectly stable and always upright. In the config tab, you can assign a keybind to turn on and off the stabilizer. You can also adjust the strength and set it to off by default. It weighs 5kg, has 14 attachment points, and will cost you 1 power core. In the lift and drag tab, you will find the quantum rudder. This block is designed to give you directional inertia when flying in space. It's kind of like the space equivalent to a tail fin. You can use its inputs to add directional control to help rotate and steer your build. In the config tab, you can adjust the strength and turn rate. This block weighs 10kg, it has 4 attachment points, and will cost you one power core. If we move on to the gadgets tab, we will find the energy shield. This box allows you to generate a protective shield around your build. It can provide some great protection against blasters and bullets, but will slowly deteriorate as it gets more and more damage until it eventually breaks. But after a short time, the shield will regenerate. In the config tab, you can adjust the shield's width, height, length, and vertical offset. As well as being able to set it to off by default, this block weighs 50 kg, has 16 attachment points, and will cost you 3 power cores. It is also good to note that the shield can be very weak against EMP blasts. We also have the new large headlamp a welcome addition to the game. Talking about EMP Blast, let's move on to the weapons. As you can see, we get a whole new tab for the weapons. In here, you will find the new blasters. The blaster is a cool weapon that shoots powerful lasers. It has a slightly slower fire rate compared to standard bullets, but a quicker reload time. It is also awesome that you can change the color of the lasers by selecting its secondary color. This block will cost you four power cores, it has four attachment points, and it 
it is also good to note that a tiny blaster does not have auto aim. It will only cost you two power cores. By the way, both the tiny blaster and the tiny cannon are now fully automatic. And of course, we have the EMP launcher. This weapon will launch a quick EMP blast instead of doing physical damage. It will have a chance to temporarily scramble function blocks. This means it can stop inputs on functional blocks or trigger them. This block weighs 5.4 kg and it will cost you only four power cores. It is also worth mentioning that every weapon has its own reticle design and you can select to disable them in the config tab. Now let's see what's included in the DLC. The first block is the new Space Fighter cockpit. It's just a really cool space themed seat. It weighs 25 kg. It is six blocks in length, which compared to the original cockpit being only five blocks in length. We also get the rocket engine, a massive rocket engine with a lot of power, 1,800 power to be exact, which is 1,000 more than the large jet. It weighs 100 kg and will cost you a whopping 20 power cores. Perfect for building vehicles that need a lot of power. The other blocks you will get from the DLC are the Greebles, which can be found in the accessories in the details tab. Just some awesome space themed parts that bring extra life to your creation. Of course, my favorite is the stick antenna. Also included in the DLC is the brand new decal set. We get a whole bunch of cool new space themed decals that can glow as well as two new textures for our blocks, glowing grid texture and the hexagon texture. And finally, just a few extra details about building in Trailmakers 1.7. There are now 36 colors in total, including more tones of gray, a wider range of green and blues, and even a light pink. In the config tab for jets and thrusters, it is now possible to disable smoke trails, which is awesome for players who want to use these blocks but not have a constant cloud of smoke filling up their screens. It is also worth to note that propellers and helicopter blades will not work in space, but all the jets and thrusters will, including the gimbal jet. Now, let's see what 1.7 has done to make the game more dynamic for the individual player. We have an all new customization menu with a wide range of new customization options, including character skin, complexion, and hair color choices. Outfits and hats can be individually selected and separated by color. So if you want to mix and match your outfit, you now have the option to. We will also be getting three new hats and outfits, the Space Pirate set, the Astro set and the Starfighter set. Now, let's talk about multiplayer. There is now a wide range of new features to make your multiplayer sessions more dynamic. One example of this is the ability to ban blocks from being used. Yes, that's right, you can ban blocks. Maybe your friend is spamming dynamite in your session. You can now have the option to ban that block. Just right click on the block in the build menu and press ban block. And of course, you can also unban blocks too. On the original maps like Treasure Island and Danger Zone, if you head into session settings, there is a new gravity slider. You can increase and lower the gravity, and if you lower it to zero, you can have zero gravity just like the space sector. You also have the option to hide player tags who are on separate teams. You can select if characters are invincible or not, which can be very handy in maps when your character can die. And finally, session hosts can manually change the power core limit in live sessions using the new power core slider. If you head over to the settings tab, you can find many options to customize your experience such as being able to switch back on the Legacy Builder rotation. If you're a controller player, there are now some new sliders to customize your controller sensitivity and controller dead zone. There is even an option to enable controller vibrations. And all the way at the bottom, you can now change your first person field of view. Well, there you have it guys, there is everything important you need to know before getting 1.7 Spacebound. I am super excited to see your awesome space creations on the workshop. I hope this has gotten you hyped for 1.7. If you enjoyed this video guys, make sure you leave a like and whilst you're at it, why not consider subscribing? It's free! But anyway, that's enough from me and I'll see you guys in space.